Today we're taking a look at the Canon ZR500, a camcorder that came out in the early 2000s. Specifically, we're going to dive into taking the DV tapes, which is how you capture footage using this camcorder, and how to transfer that over to a digital file so you can edit it in Final Cut Pro, in Premiere Pro, or whatever your preferred editing choice is. This is a full tutorial on this from beginning to end, so if you want to skip to a specific part, time codes will be listed down below. So why would you want to digitize some of your DV tapes? Well, if you want to go ahead and edit something in Premiere Pro and Final Cut, you're going to have to find a way to get that footage and convert it into a file that could be read by your computer and edited. Obviously these days, modern cameras use an SD card or something similar to that. With older cameras and camcorders like the Canon ZR500, there's that conversion step that's needed in order to get this footage there. What I use to get footage off of my Canon ZR500 is the Elgato video capture card. And on one end, you have a USB-A, which is what will connect to your computer. This boxy mechanism right here is the actual encoder. And then you have a variety of connections here at the end. I stick with the traditional RCA cables. These are the old style connectors. So if you're a 90s kid like me, you're pretty familiar with these types of connectors. But if you've never seen them before, they're called RCA. Google that and you'll see something that comes up that has a red one a yellow one, a white one, it's pretty straightforward. Now Elgato isn't the only way to go about capturing this. You could actually look on Amazon and find a variety of different options for different conversion tools to go ahead and get that footage uh, transferred over. But I like Elgato the most. It had the most consistent reviews. And at this point, I've had this tool for a handful of years now and have used it for a variety of different projects. And I can say that it works pretty great and does the job for what I need. Up next for what you'll need is an actual device that will play the tapes. Next, you'll need these. So you'll actually input this wire into here and then connect it to your camera. Or if you're using something like an old VHS player, you would connect the cables from your VHS player into your encoder and then that would be your process um, instead of connecting it to a camcorder. And then lastly, you wanna make sure that you actually download the software for the Elgato video capture. The software can be downloaded for either a Windows computer or a Mac computer. I actually use it for Windows. My preferred method of editing is actually on a Mac, but I noticed that when I converted the footage using the same exact software, same exact encoder, for some reason on the Mac, the audio drifted ever so slightly and didn't line up perfectly with the footage. But for some reason that process does not happen when I do it on a Windows computer. The first things you wanna do, once again, is download the Elgato Video Capture software for your computer. Now, once you load up the software, you'll go ahead and see this prompt right here. If your device is not already connected, it will ask you to connect a device. I have about 30 minutes of footage on the camcorder, so we're just waiting for it to rewind all the way back. It's gonna take a minute. Old school technology, y'all. So now that our footage is all the way fully rewind, if we press play, you'll see the beginning of our clips. So that is the first clip we ever took with this. So let's stop this right now. Again, rewind it. You wanna make sure it says 000 on the top, and we'll pause that right there. In order to go ahead and actually connect the camcorder to the Elgato software or the conversion tool, you wanna to get a cord like this. It's the RCA cables right here that we're used to already, and then this connector right there. Almost looks like a TRRS, uh, but this part goes into the camera, the camcorder, and then these will obviously go into the um, conversion tool. So we'll go ahead and grab our camcorder. We rewind it once again. You see we're at zero right here in the upper right hand corner. So this is ready to play completely fully. So we lift this tab and right there you can see the connection slides in just like that. And we'll take the other part and we'll put it into the tool. So yellow goes into yellow. Red goes into red. That's audio. And white goes into white. Match all the colors and you're good to go. Then you'll take the actual USB part and we'll plug it into the computer. So now we don't get that prompt when opening up the video capture Elgato software. And it's gonna prompt you right away to go ahead and make a name of this movie. So that's just your file name and you can name it whatever you want. They call it a movie just to be a little, you know, cute with it. But for this, we'll just call it test run Canon. ZR500. It also asks you 
to go ahead and gauge how long you think the movie or your file will be. So I know I have more or less about 30 minutes of footage on this DV tape. So I could set this to 30 minutes, but you also want to go above. And the reason for that is say you have 20 minutes of footage. If you know you had that on the nose, then at 20 minutes, you could essentially walk away while this software converts all your footage and not have to sit around the entire duration of the 20 minutes and just let the software do its thing. The only problem is that at 20 minutes, it will stop running. So if you put 20 minutes of footage, but you actually have 30, you'll get 10 minutes um, cut off from your overall footage. It's better to overestimate versus underestimate and possibly cut the footage that you're trying to convert. You get a little bit of estimate here on the size of the file. So we see that it'll be about one gigabyte of hard disk space required to go ahead and run this. I always like to save my footage on a flash drive for this type of stuff. So before you continue on with the software here, you want to plug in whatever extended uh, memory you might be using. So if that's an external SSD or a hard drive or a flash drive, make sure you plug that in before you hit continue here because it'll ask you where you want to save that. So once you click continue, we'll get this pop-up window. And in the pop-up window, we can click our flash drive right here. We can make a new folder for it if you want to. And again, we'll just call this Canon ZR500. Just to double check, because sometimes the software glitches, you can actually go to your preferences, see where the movie will be saved, save movies and videos. We don't want that. We want to save it on our flash drive. So again, come down here, click our drive, click the folder that we had, and click select folder. Now we have save movies in other, and it shows the file path, which goes to our Canon ZR500 folder. That's what we want, so we'll click okay. So here you have two options. You have S video or composite. We're using RCA cables, so we'll click composite. For the aspect ratio, you can either convert it as a 4.3 or a 16 by nine. One way, if you're unsure of which one to pick, is to start playing some of your footage on your camcorder and see what looks best. I know that I've used the footage from the Canon ZR500 as a 16 by nine. So I'm gonna click that option. But whatever camcorder you might have, or again, if you're doing something like videotapes, see how it looks in a 4.3 versus a 16 by nine. You want it to look as natural as possible, but we'll move forward for our purposes with a 16 by nine. Let me hit continue. All right, connect using an RCA audio cable. So again, we already know our RCA audio cable is connected, but to test it, we could once again play a couple clips and we wanna make sure that we see audio levels pop up. If we see audio levels pop up as our video is playing, then we know the audio is getting through to the program, so we're all good there. But we'll rewind it again to the beginning, so we'll hit continue. At this point, our video is good and set with the aspect ratio being a 16 by nine, and our audio is good and set. We double checked by playing a couple seconds of the first clip, and we rewind it all the way back to what we needed, so we are good to start recording. And here you can see that we have two options that could be toggled on and off. One is automatically stop recording after 60 minutes. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier in the video. You can have this automatically stop recording at a certain point. So if you click 60 minutes and you don't want to sit around just watching the actual video convert for 60 minutes, you can set a timer for 60 minutes, go play some video games, read a book, make a meal, come back, look at it after 60 minutes and see that it's been completed. Or you can toggle that off in which case it won't automatically stop after 60 minutes and you'll need to be present to go ahead and push the button to conclude the recording. I like to leave it clicked because again, I overshot the amount of footage that I have. You can also mute the sound. So as the video plays back, if you're going to sit here and monitor it the entire time during the conversion process, then you might not want to mute the sound because you can listen to it and make sure all sounds um, as it's supposed to. I'll leave it on right now just because we're going to do a test clip. Now that we're done and everything is set up, we have this big glowing, it's not glowing, but we have this big red button with the very small letters under it saying start the recording. So I always like to start the recording and give it a second or two and then I'll start playing the footage on my camcorder. Now we're in. 
And now the recording will play for the entire duration that you set. Um, and if we actually raise our volume, So you can hear because we didn't mute the sound um, when we had that option earlier, um, it's playing the audio feedback. And the moment your clip is completely done and has finalized and is no longer converting, you can manually, again, either with the timer or manually stop the recording. I usually like to stop the tape first and then stop my recording. Cause again, with this still recording, the only thing we're gonna get is a couple of frames of this blue screen. But if you were to stop recording, though your camcorder is still going, you might miss out a little bit on some of your clips. You can look here and press play and check it out and actually trim some of it. I actually usually spend no time on this at all because I'd much rather just get the process of exporting it out the way, um, saved onto my flash drive, and then I'll do whatever editing and trimming I need to in Final Cut Pro. So really here, I just kind of leave it. I'll just hit continue, and then now the film or your movie is being processed. The longer your clip, the longer processing time will be needed. I really haven't had anything be any longer than three to five minutes that I can think of. Um, and the longest clip I've probably processed before it has been like 10 minutes or so. And then at the top, you'll see your movie was successfully saved. Once again, we get our file path. We see it's in our flash drive, the folder that we set up for it, and then the actual name of our file too. You can actually click on it and it will pull up the player and show you your video. And now you can see that you have full playback of the clip um, on your computer as an MP4 file. At this point in my workflow, I take it off of Windows and put it onto a Mac. If you use Windows, then you can just continue using whatever you know computer you're on. But now you have an MP4 file, which could be easily dragged and dropped into your timeline and edited however you please. That is the full process for how to digitize your DV camcorder clips. Again, we use the video Elgato capture system. We use the encoder, their software, and I recommend at least using it on a Windows. The bulk of this really is just sitting down and watching all the footage convert. It's a pretty smooth and painless process. So time to digitize those vacation video clips, all those DV tapes that you have piled up in the basement now you know how to digitize them. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.